Welcome back, travelers. This is a continuation of the Texas trip we took in July. We are currently in New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, we are at the Fork and Spoon, headed over to the Schlitterbahn for some water park fun. Schlitterbahn happens to be one of my favorite water parks in the United States. I don't have any footage from the Schlitterbahn because I don't film in water parks. It's kind of a little creepy in my opinion. I don't want anybody taking pictures of me when I'm in my bathing suit, so I kind of hate that thing. The food at the Fork and Spoon was absolutely outstanding. It was recommended by my little brother. Um, I had the French toast sandwich, which was really good. My wife absolutely enjoyed her time as well. The next day we went to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, I remember this park before RMC took over the Rattler. Uh, it's a very fun park. It's a very picturesque park. I'm a roller coaster junkie, so I have the majority of the credits are here. Um, I will tell you that there's no cell service, so if you're doing lift uh, and you're in that quarry, you're not going to be able to get a lift. You actually have to walk up and out of the quarry. But other than that, we did not use a flash pass. Uh, we got the majority of the credits that we wanted. Part of the park was closed. It was incredibly hot outside. Um, Wonder Woman, uh, Lasso of Truth was super fun. This is my first RMC single rail. Um, I am I am kind of a heavy set gal, so I'm lucky that I actually fit in the coaster because RMCs have a, a tradition of not being heavy set friendly. Uh, ultimately, had a great time at this park. Would totally return. My only scare was that I didn't have any cell service. So the next day we did the hop on hop off tour bus ride in the Texas Ranger Museum and the Buckhorn Saloon. We also walked around the, the river walk and got a little bit more acquainted with San Antonio. San Antonio is awesome. And the hop on hop off bus tour ride that they have, if you get it in the package with the Buckhorn Saloon and the Towers of America, it's a really great deal. Um, it helps you get around San Antonio. We visited the Pearl District. We visited the Mercado. We got to see a lot of things that I wouldn't have known about um, just by sitting up on the top of that bus. And I definitely recommend sitting up on top of the bus in the morning and then going inside the different buses in the evening. Um, but this is, that's what this is. And it, they, they drive you past historical points and touristy spots. It starts at the Alamo is where we started and we went all the way through. Do I recommend this as a travel advisor? Absolutely. If you're visiting San Antonio, Texas, especially in the summer, this will get you off your feet um, and it, it will allow you to see most of San Antonio. I do recommend that if you're going to take a Lyft or an Uber back to your hotel, definitely get out of the Riverwalk area to pick one up. Um, but other than that, just enjoy this footage. I did leave some of the audio in so you can hear what they talk about and where, what they show. Yes, sir. Good. That's the best way to, to get to know the area. Beautiful city.
Now, folks, right there on the right-hand side, along that fence line, you're going to see a whole bunch of hearts. Well, that's uh, the city's way of honoring all those who have passed due to COVID. So, there's a lot of hearts on that fence. Victoria's volunteers then occupied the Alamo, already fortified prior to the battle by Cross's men. On February 23, 1836, the arrival of General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana's army outside San Antonio nearly caught them by surprise. Undaunted, the Texians and Tejanos prepared to defend the Alamo together. The defenders held out for 13 days against Santa Ana's army. When you beat San Antonio Riverwalk, you're going to see a sculpture. And the name of that sculpture, folks, is called the Grotto. That is by famed sculptor Carlos Cortez. Cortez is a third-generation sculptor here in San Antonio. You can find a lot of his artwork on the river, especially on the in the downtown area part of the Riverwalk, folks. There's a lot of his artwork down there. Now, this is the newest section of our Riverwalk right here, y'all. This was completed back in 2009, right on time when they opened up the Pearl. And it's really pretty about this area, folks. If you look down 10th Street off to the right, at the end of the block you will find VFW Post 76, the oldest VFW post in Texas. It is a Victorian-style home built in 1904 and sits on the banks of the San Antonio River. It was issued its charter in June of 1917, and the first veteran organizers were of the Spanish-American War. The VFW is open to the general public, so if you have a chance and want to visit, please do so. And just like the commentator said, folks, it is open to the general public. Now, guys, the gray building that you see across the street there, right in front of us, folks, that is called the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts. That is all our form here. But this is the back side of the Tobin that I'm showing y'all right now. This was added to the original building back in 1994 after a fire destroyed the back half of it. Well, now I'm going to show you all the front of the Tobin where it hasn't changed much throughout the years, folks. Since it was built back in 1926, and you're going to see quite a difference here between the old and the new. The front of the Tobin on our right-hand side, y'all. Our next stop is right here in front of us, ladies and gentlemen. But a little thing called the Civil War kind of got in the way, and it wasn't finished until 1875. Our 36th president of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson, well, he married his beautiful bride, Lady Bird, right there at St. Mark's in 1934. Now, it's still under construction. They haven't finished it yet. 
when they do finish it, it's going to be about four and a half miles long. And it's not going to have all the bells and whistles of our original river walk. It's not going to have the bars and stuff like that. It's going to be more of a nature walk, more of a place for once to go and look at the beautiful scenery and artwork. San Antonio's second river walk. Margarita, after all. It's also the home of the best Mexican food in San Antonio, ladies and gentlemen. Market Square, El Mercado, the largest Mexican market outside of Mexico, where you will find the... I hope you guys are having a, a good time enjoying the tours, but most importantly, folks, I really hope you're enjoying San Antonio. It's such a beautiful day. Get out there and enjoy it, y'all. Now, there is another bus waiting for you guys to uh, continue the tour. It'll be leaving at 11 o'clock in just a few minutes. If y'all have any... Okay, so that was the hop on hop off bus tour that we did the first two hours. We stayed on the same bus. And then when we came into the station, we switched buses and we made notes during the tour of where we wanted to hop off of. So this here is the Pearl factory or the Pearl district as known in San Antonio. And it used to be a beer cannery. Um, it has a really cool history. Uh, it actually became woman owned. There is a CIA on the grounds, which is a Culinary Institute of America there. Uh, it is sort of a food, uh, foodie paradise. Um, we wandered through here. There was buskers. There was all different kinds of um, craft food and craft drink and craft soaps. And, and it was kind of like a farmer's market. So it was really, really awesome to wander this and see uh, all the different pieces and how it's been changed over the years. The tour bus driver gives you an idea of the history of the plant um, and how it changed from husband and wife to, you know, wife owned only and, and ran. Um, so I totally recommend that if you're in San Antonio and you do that, definitely make this one of your stops and wander around. You get to taste a little bit of the of San Antonio while you're here. So it, and, and it hits all five of the senses. Again, this is July, so it is incredibly hot outside. San Antonio is not known for its rain. Um, and what was really cool was this particular year, it had a great rainy season. So San Antonio was super green and super lush and really, really beautiful. Uh, so please enjoy the footage of the plant. Um, and I'll talk to you when we switch spots. So after wandering Pearl, we went to the Mercado, we hopped on another bus and this place is pretty cool. It was packed. So unfortunately we didn't get to eat anything, but we did get to wander around. The music was great. The sights, the sounds, it smelled like some of the best Mexican food you could ever just, it was amazing. I mean, literally could taste it through your nose. Um, really enjoyed this spot. Definitely recommend to wander on this one. So we got a little warm, so we decided to go to the Texas Ranger Museum and Buckhorn Saloon. Um, we've been traveling around on the buses for about six hours now, so uh, this was a great way to end it. Uh, fully air conditioned. It's, as you can see, um, this place has a lot of like trophy animals. Uh, hunting is huge in Texas, but this is even bigger because of the historical value. Uh, it tells you the story of how these things were acquired on the frontier 
in the olden days of Texas. Now, when I say Texas Rangers, I don't mean the baseball team. I mean the lawmen. So enjoy this footage of uh, both sides and some surprises of the Buckhorn Saloon in the Texas Ranger Museum. surprised to see something like this in the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum. Um, I was not expecting this at all. There is a lot of integrated tech into this. Uh, Sideshows and circuses and things like this were huge on the frontier. It was a form of entertainment. Um, and it was also a form of employment for outlaws and people who um, needed money quickly. This was another way to go. Uh, you hear me in this clip apologize to the gentleman who's mummified in there. Apparently the guy was an outlaw. Um, there's lots of different mummies and things in here. Uh, so definitely makes it interesting. There's also a lot of tech and illusions in here as well. Uh, so I definitely recommend this to be a stop on a trip to, to San Antonio because this is really very, really very interesting. Um, it's just not something you expect to see. I'm not going to give it all away, but a lot of this has interactive things going on as well. So uh, it's really mind blowing how big this place actually is. So that evening we went back to the hotel and the next morning we woke up and took an early flight into Arlington, Texas. Uh, loved Six Flags Over Texas. It was fun, but Arlington uh, and Dallas itself leaves something to be desired. Did not enjoy the area at all. Um, but definitely recommend going to Six Flags Over Texas if you've never been. This place was great. 
the rides were fun. There's a lot of history here. The food is great. The folks were wonderful. Um, definitely recommend the park. Okay, final thoughts on the Texas trip. Uh, definitely don't want to go back in July unless it's just to do Guam Pools for my birthday because the Shoulder Bond is excellent. Um, Southwest Airlines still hate your seating policy. I don't like that I have to pay an early bird to get a seat next to my wife. However, your flight attendants are fantastic, the service is fantastic, and the friends are nice. Um, San Antonio, Texas, definitely will visit again. You're absolutely wonderful. Riverwalk is great. The food is excellent. The hotel that we stayed at was the Holiday Inn near the airport. It was wonderful. Uh, Arlington, Texas. Um, I will only go back only to go to Six Flags over Texas because I didn't get the shock road credit. So that would be the only reason why I'd go back. Otherwise, I don't recommend. If any of you are interested in replicating this trip, go ahead and give shoot me an email, tricycletravel at gmail.com or visit my website, www.tricycletravelco.com and I will get you hooked up. Thanks for watching. I am your host and advisor, Nikki, and I'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I am your host and advisor, Nikki, and I'll see you real soon.